Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the theoretical background for subset sum problem, so let's get started. It is one of the most important problems in complexity theory and uh, computer science. The problem is that given an S set of integers and is there a non-empty subset whose S sum is equals to zero? Or, or not, not just zero, for example, the sum can be one, two, three, and so on. So any arbitrary natural number. So for example, given the set five, two, one, three, it contains integers, and the S is equal to nine. So the question is, is there a non-empty subset of this five, two, one, three set where the sum is equal to nine? And of course the answer is yes, because the subset 5, 3, 1, if we sum the items, so 5 plus 3 plus 1, it is going to yield 9. So this is the problem. And the problem itself, I mean solving the concrete problem, is MP-complete. So we have efficient algorithms when the problem is small, when we have a huge problem and we try to find a solution, we can do it in exponential time complexity, which is very, very slow. And by the way, it's a special case of the knapsack problem. So the solutions, first of all, the naive approach is the brute force search, generate all the subsets of the given set of integers, and if the number of the integers in the set S is equal to capital N, there are two to the power of N possible subsets. And we have to check whether the sum of all subsets is equal to the S we are looking for or not. We can do it in linear time complexity, so the overall time complexity will be exponential, although n times 2 to the power of n, which is a typical exponential time complexity, which is not so good. That's why we should use dynamic programming. We want to avoid calculating the same problems over and over again, that's why we create a dynamic programming table, and this is the so-called memoization, as we have discussed in the previous sections already. So let's consider the situation where we have an S set of integers, 5, 2, 1, and 3, and we have the S sum is equal to 9. So we create our dynamic table, and of course the column header will be the subsums. So we consider that what would be the solution if the sum would be 0, if the sum would be 1, then 2, 3, 4, up to 9. And of course 9 is the solution we are looking for, but we try to make subproblems and we try to compute these subproblems step by step basis. And the row headers is the, just a set of integers. We consider subsolutions when, when we consider the first the first two, the first three, and all of the integers from the set S. So what would be the solutions if we wouldn't include any integers? This is the zero case. What if we include the first item, the five? What if we would include the first two, five and two, first three, five, two and one, and so on? Why is it good? Because these are the subproblems. These subproblems can be computed quite fast, and we just store it in this table. And anytime we try to solve the problem, the overlapping subproblems can be. We are not going to recompute it, we are just going to look it up in this dynamic programming table. So, of course, if the sum S is not zero and the subset is zero, we consider no integers from the subset S, it means that no feasible solution, of course. The first row is equal to false, the first column is equal to true, because we can make the empty subset to make some zero, so there is always a trivial solution for the subproblem. If we, if we aren't consider any items at all, this is the trivial, this is why it is trivial solution. This is, by the way, the equations. The dynamic table ij, where the i is the row index, j is the column index, is equal to true. We are going to use true or false, because we try to find the solution, whether is it possible to construct the sum from the set integers? And the answer will be a yes or no. So that's why we are not going to store integers, for example, or doubles, but rather true and false. So the first row, if, if the j is equal to 0, which means that the, the, the column index is 0, then it means that it is the first column. 
it is going to be true and the first row is going to be false. And by the way, this is, this is the equation we want to use. So the dp table ij is equal to the dp table i minus 1j. If the dp table i minus 1j is true, what does it mean? It means that if the given cell, we are standing on a given cell. If the cell right above it is true, then we have to copy this value. And else, we have to consider, we have to go up. So we have to decrement the row index and we have to take as many steps to the left as the integers. So this is why the dp table ij is equal to the dp table i minus 1. It means that we decrement the row index so we go up and j minus s i minus 1. It means because there is a minus sign we go to the left. And we take as many steps as the integers because the s denotes the integer set. It's going to be clear. So for example here when we consider the first item when the s is equal to 1 and it is we, we considering the integer 5 we have to give some 1. When we have integer 5 of course it is not feasible and by the way, it's very important that if the column index is less than the S row index, S, I don't want to repeat myself over and over again, but S is the set of integers, 5, 2, 1, and 3. So if the this 5 is greater than 1, because 1 is the sum and 5 is the row index, it means that we have to copy the value from the row above. So that's what we are going to do. 2 is less than 5, so we copy. 3 is less than, we, than 5, so we copy. 4 is less than 5, then we copy. 5 is not less than 5. 5 is equal to 5. And it, of course, when we have to give some 5, when we have integer 5, it is feasible, of course. 5 is equal to 5, so we just have to take this 5 integer, and it is going to yield 5. But we are not able to construct 6 from the integer 5, because 6 is greater than 5, and false, false, false. Okay, so we go to the next row, and we consider that what would be the solution if we can consider the 5 and the 2 at the same time. In the previous row, we were considering using just the single 5 integer. Now, we are able to use the 5 and the 2 integer. Is it possible to get a 1 out of 5 and 2? Of course not, because it's very important the column index is less than the S row index. So we copy the value above. And anyways, if it's false, so if the cell above contains a true, here it is not the situation because there's a false, then we go to the we go up and take as many steps to the left as the given integer and because we considering the 2 the row index is 2 we take 2 steps to the left and because there's a true we are going to copy the true to the given cell the next one is false we have to copy it then false again then it's true why is it true because if the given cell above holds a true then we just have to copy it then it's false again then it's going to be true, because the cell above contains a false. We have to take two steps to the left. Why two steps? Because the row index is two. Then it's going to be false again. Yeah, it is a false, but we have to take a single step to the left. Why a single step? Because the row index is one. We're considering whether it is possible to give one when we can have integer five, integer two, and integer one at the same time. So we can use every integer from this set except for the three. So five, two, and one. It's true because we have to copy the value from above if the that cell contains true. We have to copy the true because we have to take one step to the left, then false, then true because the cell above contains a true, then true, then true because the cell above contains a true, then true because we have to take a step left, and it's a false. And we just have to copy the trues from above. Then, of course, we have to take one step up. Then three step to the left. Why three steps? Because the row index is a three. And we keep iterating, of course, because there's a lot of true, we just have to copy. 
And the last item is true. We have to take three steps and come to the conclusion that what does it mean? There's a true at the last cell. It means that there's a feasible solution. So 9 can be constructed out of this S set of integers. So 9 and we have 5, 2, 1, 3. It is a feasible solution. Of course, because, for example, we take 5 and 1 and 3, it is going to yield 9. So, okay, we come to the conclusion that there's a feasible solution. But what are these integers? So, what are the concrete solutions? We're starting from the last cell. If the t is not coming from above, and the situation is this, because there's the false above the t, it means it is in the solution set. So, we come to the conclusion that this row, and of course this row represents the integer 3. This integer 3 is in the solution set. And okay, we consider it to be a solution. We decrement the row index, which means that we go up and we go as many steps to the left as the included integer from set S. We have talking about that we have included the integer 3. So we go up and take three steps to the left. And we consider that position. Okay, the cell above contains a false and the red cell is a true, which means that they are not equal, which means that this one, this row, is in the solution cell again. And of course we go up and take as many steps to the left as the included integer. The included integer was 1, so that's why we go up and take one, one step to the left. We come to the conclusion that there's a t, and the cell above contains a t, so we come to the conclusion that this integer 2 is not in the solution cell, because there's a t, the red cell, and there's a t above. So we just go up. If, if it's not in the solution cell, we just go up. And it is in the solution cell. Why? Because the cell above contains a false and it is a true, so they are not equal. So we take one step upward direction and take as many left step as the included integer. It was 5, so we come to the conclusion that we bump into the column 0. And if you bump into the column 0, it means that we have to terminate our algorithm. So we come to the conclusion, I think it is pretty intuitive, but the solution is quite consistent. We have to include 5, 1, and 3, and the sum of 5 plus 1 plus 3 is equal to 9, so it is a good solution. So this is how we solve this problem with the help of dynamic programming. Thanks for watching.